Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So previous to now in Unit 8, Geologic Time, we have been looking at the tools that scientists have used to figure out the order that events happened in and when certain events happened. When we first started this unit, we watched that video uh, that went over a very brief history of the entire Earth, uh, all the major events that happened. So what we're gonna be doing in this last section is we are going to be putting everything we learned together, looking at the geological timescale as a whole, very briefly how it's set up, and we are going to be looking at some problems with the geologic timescale, why it was very difficult for scientists to get this whole thing set up in the first place. Yeah. Today, we are going to start out with looking at the structure and introducing the idea of the geologic timescale more specifically. So first off, how did scientists come up with this idea? The geologic time scale is the system that chronologically or in time order classifies rocks, the rock layers, and major events in geologic history. Uh, these look like, if we were to look through the rock layer, these look like those different layers that we were trying to date with uh, Steno's laws. And very simply, the geologic time scale tries to put all the events recorded in the rocks in order. This was first devised by scientists in the 17 and 18, 1800s. Scientists we learned about like Steno, uh, who worked with different layers of rocks and trying to put them in order. Scientists like William Smith, who tried to use fossils to help put these things in order. When it first started out, this was all about relative dating. They could put these different events, these different rock layers in order, but scientists were not able to determine exact dates of these things until they had things like rel or until they had things like absolute dating and radiometric dating that we learned about more recently. But nonetheless, scientists took their different rock layers, took the fossils and the events that these rock layers and fossils showed happened, and they divided them up into different periods of time based on events. Bigger time periods had bigger events at the beginning at the end. Smaller time periods had smaller events at the beginning at the end. Uh, and there are four units in the geologic time scale, just like we have different units of time for every day, minutes, seconds, hours, uh, to show us how time passes in different ways. We've got different units of the geologic time scale. These were introduced to us briefly at that video. We're gonna go over them now and really look at them in depth here. The biggest unit of the geologic time scale is an eon followed by an era, a period, and an epoch. So these are the different divisions of time that we use. Next, we are going to take a look at these units, see how they are used to divide up time. Uh, we're gonna start from the longest to the shortest. Remember, the eon is the longest unit in our geologic time scale, and the epoch is the shortest unit in our geologic time scale. And what we're gonna see is that uh, the units that have bigger chunks of time in them go all the way back to the formation of the Earth, whereas our smaller units don't go back quite as far. And the reason that is, the reason we break up the more recent past into smaller units, but not the really far back past, is that because we have a lot more evidence. So that's what we're going to see. The more recent years are broken up into much smaller time periods, the further back ones are not. So first off, eon. This is our biggest chunk of time. Eons are many hundreds of millions to billions of years old. The time range here is half a billion to two billion years for an eon to take place. That's a really, really long period of time. There are four eons throughout the history of the Earth. So the entire history of the Earth from 4.6 billion years ago till right now is only divided up into four eons. That means they go back from 4.5 billion years ago to right now. Next, we have eras. This is the next biggest chunk. Eras are like tens of millions to hundreds of millions of years long. So still very long, many, many millions of years, but not billions of years. There are three eras throughout history, but they do not go back to 4.5 billion years ago. The first era is not at the beginning of the Earth. We didn't divide time up that long ago because we don't have as much evidence to give us these little divisions. There's not that much evidence of things happening to need to divide up early time between aeons. Uh, in fact, eras only go back about 540 million years ago. So between 540 million years ago and right now, there are three eras. Next are periods. 
periods are a few million years to tens of millions of years long. Pretty long, but definitely not as long as our eras or our eons. And there are 11 periods in the geologic time scale. Again, they don't go back all the way to the beginning of time. They don't go back to 4.5 billion years ago when the Earth was formed. They start at the same time that we started counting eras. So 540 million years ago. This is when scientists had a lot more evidence to figure out more specifically what happened, and so it made more sense to divide things up into more periods of time. The next is the epoch. The epoch is the smallest unit of time that we are going to discuss in depth here. And epochs are only tens of thousands to a few million years long. They vary greatly in length, uh, but they are overall much, much, much shorter than the periods. And there are seven epochs in all of the geologic time scale, and they start even more recently than our periods and our eras. In fact, they only started counting epochs about 65 million years ago, so around the time the dinosaurs went extinct is when we first started dividing time up into these smaller and smaller time units. And again, the reason that we keep getting smaller and smaller time units, the closer we get from the formation of the Earth to the present, is because the more recently we look in that geologic record, the more evidence there is, and the more definitely we can get an idea of what happened. To give us an idea of these eons and eras, uh, I want to look at two examples of timescales. We are going to look at the current eon that we are in and the current era that we are in. So first is the Phanerozoic eon. Phanerozoic, if you remember way back to that video that we watched well over a month ago when we started this unit, means visible life. This is the current eon. So it started 540 million years ago, and we are still in the Phanerozoic eon right now. Remember, eons are the largest uh, of our units of geologic time. They are hundreds of millions of years or billions of years long. So each of these units of geologic time starts with some major event recorded in the rock record and ends with some other major event recorded in the rock record. In the case of the Phanerozoic Eon, the big thing is that big animals with hard shells started showing up. That might sound specific, but at the time that scientists set up the geologic time scale, they were limited in the types of fossils that they could look at. They couldn't look at microscopic fossils that scientists looked at today. So the fossils from the beginning of the Phanerozoic, these were the oldest fossils that scientists like William Smith would have found when he was doing his original research on fossils. So when scientists set up the geologic time scale or the GTS, these were the oldest fossils. So the Phanerozoic eon was thought of the time when life really started. We'll learn later that that's not true, but this, these are the really big obvious signs of life, things that definitely look like living things we might see today. This is the only eon that is broken up into smaller time scales. The three other eons that take place before this, most of the history of the Earth is just broken up into those big time scales because there is not that much evidence of it. This eon, however, is broken up into three eras and 11 periods. So we have a lot more smaller divisions of time because we know a lot more about what happened in this more recent time period. Next, we are going to look at an era. This is the current era. Remember, eras are the next time scale smaller than eons. So Cenozoic means new life, and the Cenozoic era is when new life that resembles mostly the organisms that we see today became most common. And this is the current era that we are in. It started 65 million years ago, and we are still in the Cenozoic era now. The thing that starts it off is when all the dinosaurs died. So big event present in the rock record, all these fossils stop showing up because these dinosaurs are now dead. Started with an asteroid hitting the Earth. The Cenozoic era is the only era that is broken up into uh, epochs. So we have two big time chunks, two periods in the Cenozoic. And then we also have much smaller periods called epochs. These are our smallest periods. 
that are only present in the Cenozoic. And again, the reason we have smaller and smaller time scales, the, fur the closer to the present we look in the geologic record, is because we have much more evidence. So overall, we learned that the geologic time scale is how scientists record the events of history shown through the rock record from the formation of the Earth to the present day. Uh, it is divided up into four different units of times, eras, eons, periods, and epochs. We learned roughly how long each of those periods of time is, and we learned that the closer we get to the present, the more small chunks of time we have because there is more and more evidence for what happened the closer we get to the present day compared to really far in the past. We learned that the current eon, the largest unit of time that we are in, is called the Phanerozoic, and this is when very visible large multicellular hard-shelled organisms started showing up in the fossil record, some of the oldest fossils that were found when scientists first started looking for them. We learned that the current era we are in is the Cenozoic, this started when the dinosaurs died. We'll later learn that this is when mammals started dominating the Earth, and this is the current era that we are in.